Good morning. As we prepare for worship, we are going to take a few minutes for a special presentation. We're going to recognize and thank our staff for the exceptional work which they have done, are doing, and will continue to do as we move through this pandemic. I would remind you that no one has training for this new reality, but your staff has done an incredible job and in fact has gone above and beyond what would normally be expected of someone doing their job. They've worked to keep ministry moving, to keep community united, and to keep all of us safe. The congregation has gotten together a small thank you gift. I'll let you guess where the Baskin Robbins gift certificate comes from. And as Michelle Owens will tell you, the plaque is from me because I really like plaques and I think everybody should get a plaque. Not a plague, but a plaque. I misspelled it in an email and she's never let me forget that. You get to see and hear Keith and Jim on a regular basis, but you don't often get to see Brenda and Ron and Jenny, and so I've asked them to be present so that we could gift them where you can see them. I will tell you, these guys are simply the best. We all hope and pray for a speedy resolution to this pandemic, but while it persists, we are grateful for the love and the care which each of you has shown and are showing for Christ church and for this congregation. I'll ask you to come forward one at a time. You can play rock, paper, scissor, which is what my granddaughter and I do, or you can just race up here and we will gift you. I would ask you to stay six feet apart. Who's coming first? Oh, it looks like Ron. All right, Ron, since you get to come first, I will read, since I'm not very creative, everybody's plaque is the same, so you don't have plaque envy. In recognition of meritorious service during COVID-19 2020, Ron Morgenstern, this plaque is presented with gratitude and appreciation, St. Timothy Lutheran Church. Thank you very much. Good man. Okay, next up, it's Jenny. Let's get over here so everybody can see you. Wave to the camera. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Brenda. Oh, y'all actually came in order. Good for you. Okay. Stop. Stop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hup, hup. There you go. Thank you. Jim, gee, it seems like we hadn't seen you since Thursday. Thank you, and thank you. And last but not least, our musical inspiration. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. No, thank you. Now, you guys are welcome to stay since you're all spread out or you may depart in peace. That is entirely up to you. To the rest of us, we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you have, that you have provided enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. peace of Christ is with you always and also with you. I invite you to share that peace if you have others in your home. If not, I invite you to take your phone and text a word of peace to someone in your address book who is in need of hearing and receiving that peace from you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. 
Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. few announcements. We welcome all who have gathered online to worship. For those who are new to St. Timothy, you are invited to explore what we understand our mission to be by visiting our website. And I urge our members to use our website to stay informed and connected. The weekly update, the tidings, and the monthly calendar are on the What's Happening tab. Also, there are links to our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. One thing you'll find on our YouTube page are the children's sermons. And I would like to thank those folks who have been sharing their talents to provide them. So thank you, Marianne and Kate and Valerie and Witt. And again this morning, Laureen. There will be a fellowship event two weeks from today at Rockland Park. The outreach committee is offering this as a safe way to fellowship with one another. Stay tuned for event time and other details. That will be June 28th, sometime in the afternoon or early evening. We continue with readings for today. A reading from Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain, then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured, treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine." But you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. 
But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth and the tenth chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles, first Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. Enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff for the laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out in it who is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, Shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them. For they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, You will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
It does not happen terribly often, but every now and then, God whacks you upside the head with a two by four. At least that's the way it works with me. Not terribly comfortable, but highly effective, as in whack. Okay, I'm paying attention, please carry on. For weeks and weeks, you and I have been under a relentless deluge of bad news. Not going to get into what is fake and what is not. I will leave that to others who are smarter smarter than I. I will note, however, that as a congregation, as a nation, as a world, we have had more than our share of less than uplifting information with which to deal. We remain in the midst of a pandemic. A virus has claimed over 116,000 of our brothers and sisters in this country. Young and old, shades of all colors, all socioeconomic strata, and while arguments will be made for years about where the impact is greater, the impact is undeniable. We grieve the losses. We mourn with the families. The pain is real. The pain is ever-present, and it is inescapable. Businesses are gradually beginning to reopen, and still millions of people are unemployed or underemployed. And this creates untold layers and levels of anxiety and fear and uncertainty. Questions swirl around us like locusts. We swat and we swing, but they keep buzzing and swooping. So many of them coming from all directions. Too many. It's tough to see. It's tough to breathe. It's hard to keep your bearing and your focus. So much misery and so much pain. And then someone, somewhere, asked, what else can go wrong? I would like to know who that person was. Now we have civil unrest. I understand how and why it began, I think. And we can all agree that equal treatment under the law is a laudable goal. It is a part of our cultural story and heritage. And it is a reality for which we continue to strive. However laudable the goal, the reality of equal treatment under the law falls short. Decades and centuries of pent-up anger have been released, exposed. Have peaceful protests been hijacked? Quite probably. But the result is that all of that ugliness, all of the racial disparity and socioeconomic inequality that's been lurking kind of just below the surface, lurks no longer. It's now on full display. It is replayed on computer screens and television screens with mind-numbing frequency. And if that is all you see, if that is the entire set of your data points, the result can be overwhelming. Everything is on fire. The world is ending. The zombie apocalypse is upon us. I was rapidly approaching that point of sensory overload. And it's not about a lack of faith, right? Somebody pointed out that, well, pastor, you just have to have faith. No, I got faith. What I got is an overabundance of bad news. My faith is okay. My psyche is getting overwhelmed. 
It's not about simply trying to pretend that the news isn't real or denying that we have a problem. The news is real. And yes, Houston, we do have a problem. But the good news of this day is that we are not defined by the negative. Be that COVID-19 or civil unrest or my own sinfulness. That's not all that we are. That is not who and whose we are. Psalm 100, which seemed woefully out of place for today... I think is perfectly positioned. Psalm 100, that many of us learned as a child. Make a joyful noise. Speaks volumes to overwhelmed and hurting people. In the midst of all that is wrong, something is very much right. The presence of of God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Give thanks and bless God's holy name, God indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting. Even in the midst of evil, in the midst of injustice, in the midst of chaos and uncertainty, in the midst of pain and lament, God is present. And in that presence, You and I give thanks. We give thanks not because we're suffering. Nobody enjoys suffering. We don't give thanks pretending that it isn't real. We give thanks because we are not alone in the midst of the world's ills. We give thanks that in the midst of all that is wrong, we are not defined by the wrong, nor ultimately by our struggle. We are defined by God's gracious act in holy baptism. Each of us, all of us, made to be children of God. God's people created in the image of God. That's the definition that makes us worthy of respect and dignity. How we treat one another is not and cannot be determined by the color of our skin or what political party we belong to or where or how or even if we worship. Respect, dignity, and value are conveyed not by social construct, but by the action of Almighty God. Even when everything is going wrong, when the world seems to be on fire and we are at each other's throats, when the zombies seem to be closing in, God is present. That's the source of joy. Maybe not happiness, but joy. I can be dreadfully unhappy I can be miserable, but joy, joy in God's presence is always there. Joy is available to me in the presence and through the activity of Almighty God. Sometimes it is supremely difficult to make a joyful noise. The words seem to catch in our throats and we are racked with sobs. Sometimes the rising anger and frustration seems to choke off songs of praise. The joyful noise comes out more like a groan. 
But it is important for each of us to remember that we're not defined by the negative. We are more than our worst day, our worst performance, our lowest point. That's not what defines us. We are defined by, loved by, precious in the sight of God. You are. I am. They are. We are truly in this together. Chaotic though life may be. Difficult as the separation is. We need to give thanks. We need to worship. Whether we worship online or we worship in person, we need to be reminded that there is light beyond the smoke. That there is hope beyond the despair. That there is love within the strained bonds of our less than perfect union. And the presence of God remains in the midst of it all. We are defined by the God who enters into our messiness, into our confusion, into our pain, and walks with us. As we gathered a week ago with our bishop for prayer and lament, he referenced a hymn which resonated with me. I think it flows from Psalm 100. That in the midst of our pain and grief, we are pulled forward. When we gather at an open grave, we are reminded that the pain of loss, while very real, is not the last word. That the last word which God speaks is a word of life. Even in the face of death, God speaks to life. We're not left to wallow in grief and agony. We are pulled forward, sometimes kicking and screaming, but forward. We are pulled into the light, into the life, into the heart of God. We are reminded, and you will have the opportunity to sing. When eyes begin to see all people's dignity, Light dawns on a weary world. The promised day of justice comes. The trees shall clap their hands. The dry lands gush with springs. The hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And all the world in wonder echoes shalom. Amen.
Let us confess this gift of faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Give Pastor a break from having that. <laughs> uh, I did want to point out regarding offering that the new website has a donate now button. It is through Tithely. I've tested it out and the percentage is pretty low. It was like a percent and a half went to them for if I did it by ACH. So there's that. Thank you for continuing to provide financial support for the church and its ministry. Also, um, the hymn of the day, talking about light in a weary world, uh, we're all wired differently, and some of us do well with change and some don't, and for those who don't, it can be exhausting and wearying. Um, so if you are one that deals better with it, one offering you can make is peace to those who are not doing so well and uh, just be gentle, be kind. Also, for if you're one of those who's reaching the end in exhaustion, perhaps you could offer time to devote study and prayer. Um, the God who made us and knows us talks often about being weary from, I don't grow weary uh, in doing good. There's scripture in the New Testament, Galatians, Second Th Thessalonians, um, there's one more episode. oh Hebrews and then of course Isaiah 40 where he talks about wait on the Lord and they will um, you won't grow weary and you'll bury you up on eagle's wings so some of the offering this week could just be peace and time so I'll leave you with that
Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Dear Jesus, friend of children, stay close to us during our summer adventures. Keep us safe and help us prepare for school in the fall. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of justice and equality, we ask for discernment and blessings for teenage activists. Bless their causes and keep them from harm. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift up to you our St. Timothy community. Bless us with good health and bring us back to worship together as soon as it's safe. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, we thank you for all the gifts you so freely give us. You show us your love and satisfy our needs. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all those whose voices go unheard. And help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you are our sure comforter in times of grief. We lift up Steve and Sue and all the Peterson family at the death of Hilda, Hilda Peterson and ask for your presence with them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you are the true, true source of all healing. We lift up to your care those who are in need of healing, especially Kay Abernathy, Mike Dubeck, Dave Edsel, Cheryl Escobar, Meredith House, Judith Hughes, Ed Kaler, Pat Lacander, Ruffy Longry, Anthony Marino, Bill Nelson, Tom Nelson, Mark Pisoni, Lori Rustkowski, Sandy Schisler, Karen C., 
Kathy Smith, Linda Yonke, Jen Yaman, and others we lift up to you by name now. Martha. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As the body of Christ, all are invited at this time to present other petitions. We continue to pray for all those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. We pray for those who are infected. We lift up those who live in fear and isolation and those who live in anger. We pray for your spirit of healing, your spirit of peace, and your spirit of wisdom. As people take to the streets, allow us to hear and to listen to what drives hearts and minds and life stories. Help us to be the people you call us to be. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Hilda, Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, in those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.